This is Brock. He's a Pokemon character. Everyone knows Pokemon, everyone knows the Brock memes, most people remember that he does a lot of this. So what's extreme speed, Brock? It's an attack that increases a Pokemon's speed. Because the anime is meant for kids, there isn't any expectation that the viewers will always understand what's going on, so he's there to make sure everyone's on the same page. That's fine for a children's anime, but most people my age aren't looking to have it explained to us every episode that water is strong against fire. That exposition slows pacing and takes away that sense of satisfaction you get when you figure out something you don't think everybody else picked up on. Introducing. Heavenly Delusion. This anime is good. I mean, Serial Experiments Lane comes around every 15 years and is immortalized by all 11 fans good. Great visuals, writing and sound. But the best part, what really made me fall in love? The smarter you are, the better it gets and not in a Dr. Stone, I happen to know a bunch of obscure knowledge way, but because it leaves so much unsaid that you have to connect the dots for yourself. And the more you line up, the more incredible the series ends up seeming. The story begins in this perfect little community or boarding school we aren't told an awful lot about. We have children playing, attending school with futuristic technology, and we're introduced to this interesting character. She can either see the future and doesn't know it, or has really good intuition. We have no idea which yet. This place is established as a primary setting and the only piece of information we get comes in the form of a cryptic question. Do you want to go outside the outside? I'm going to call this place heaven. Ignorance is bliss after all and it houses these children who don't know anything at all. They're born and grow up within walls they're led to believe are essentially the boundary of the livable world. Of the two stages episode 1 sets for the story to be told, this is the first. The second stage I'll call Hell. That's Earth. It was Earth. Our opening sequences here feature the solitary travels of a pair of wanderers seeking out a heaven they've been told exists out there somewhere. They introduce us to post-apocalyptic Japan. Silent deserted, in a state of disrepair, a contrast to the modern metropolises we expect of the land, and a stark contrast to the sights which opened the anime. I am bad with names and expecting you to remember them probably won't work, so we'll call him Hellboy and his bodyguard slash Onesan Hell Girl. As we'll come to find out over the course of the first episode, they grew up after what people have come to call the collapse without ever knowing even the most basic of comforts. The exact opposite of the kids in heaven. The perfect complement to give us a complete view of the world. Now, I'm an idiot. I got this far into the script and got stuck for four months because I'm not smart enough to tell you how smart this anime is and I wanted this video to be perfect. But my video will suck either way and 90% of you have stopped watching already anyway, so I'm going to sound stupid from here but let me tell you what makes this anime special. It doesn't care. With some of the most incredible direction and attention to detail I've ever seen in my life, it presents mysteries and gives us answers to them we don't even notice we're getting. Here's an example I didn't realize until I watched someone else's video. With this being a post-apocalyptic world, it goes without saying that resources are scarce. While on their quest to find heaven, Hellboy and Hellgirl are ambushed by this group of bandits. Hellgirl pulls out a gun and they almost retreat, but one of them doubts it's real because look at it. The thugs attack anyway, but here's where it gets good. Hellgirl says to run and she tries to get over the fence while Hellboy fends them off. When it looks like they might finally be too much for him, she fires. The gun's more than real and the next time she speaks, they listen. 
They end up following these guys back to their base where Hellgirl spots a generator and tells them to charge her battery or else. They listen and when it's done charging they ask what the battery is for and she puts it back in the gun. Now, haha, funny moment, but that's not what's amazing about this scene. She says she wasn't sure if that last shot would have fired, and that recontextualizes the entire dynamic of the fight. Why did they drop their bags and risk losing everything to the bandits? Why did Hellboy fight them hand to hand? Why did Hellgirl climb up the fence if she was going to fire at a telephone pole anyway? because the gun probably wouldn't have worked and they had to be ready to escape. Special attention isn't drawn to any of these things. Tactics are for smart people and if you can't figure it out yourself, you don't deserve to know. But okay, we went over this scene a second time with added information and picked up something cool, but is that really what's gotten me so crazy about this anime? No. You could have figured out the battery was missing from the gun while she was threatening this guy before it was ever charged because if you look at the gun in these three different scenes you notice the battery is actually missing but nothing draws attention to it at all and if you weren't paying attention to every single frame of this anime, like me, you would have finished the whole thing without ever knowing we were given the chance to figure it out because Heavenly Delusion doesn't pat itself on the back. It doesn't rewind to show you what a good job it did. It doesn't care if you pick up on all the details or not. Without any of the added context, purely on world building, character writing and cinematics, it's able to compete with any other anime that might top the seasonal charts. And when you consider the sheer number of signs pointing to actual plot beats that are hidden in plain sight, Heavenly Delusion is an experience so far surpassing any anime of the last few years that it's not even funny. Every scene in Heavenly Delusion is intentional. Every minute something is happening on screen, whether you know it or not, the plot is developing. In this video, I have already shown you a critical plot revelation that almost no one spotted watching this episode, especially for the first time. This scene, the first scene of the anime, 30 seconds in, shows these two girls, and a detail your brain would have missed was that the buttons on Mimihime's uniform have a design here while the other girls doesn't. Except, that's not true. Every uniform has the design, but this is a camera trick, one of many the anime uses to deceive us. When you look at most of the shots we get of the kids in heaven, they're just outside of the distance, where the camera will pick up the details on their buttons. Even when they're close enough that the buttons should show, unusual angles are used to cut them out of the frame completely and intentionally hide them. Whenever we get a shot of the button detail, it's either super out of focus or at an angle and it's always for a really brief moment. Now, you may be wondering what the plot revelation was and why I'm so obsessed with these buttons. This is kinda crazy and I only discovered it by mistake today. But there's one other object the camera always avoids looking at directly. Hellgirl's gun. Because she either has it holstered or is waving it around all the time, we never get a good close look at it. Never, except the one time I already showed you. Let's look at that scene one more time. For just a few frames, we get the only unobscured look we're going to have at this gun for a long, long time. And that insignia looks awfully familiar. Hellboy and Hellgirl both claim they have no idea what or where Heaven is, so why is Hellgirl flaunting around a gun with Heaven's logo? No years are ever given to us, so we have no idea what technology was meant to be normal, but from what we see in the design of the houses they rummage and how surprised the old timers were to see new technology despite having been around before the collapse, we can figure out that whenever the world ended, their tech was pretty much the same as ours. So if that's the case, and we've only seen one futuristic looking setting no one knows about, where did this gun come from 
at all. As someone without an army of loyal subscribers, I'm operating under a time limit here because no one will click my videos if I even approach 20 minutes. So I have no idea if my sentences are even coherent, but I warned you I'd sound stupid, so I'm not done yet. So far? I was just explaining all the details the story delivered in an interval of a few seconds by having Hellgirl point a gun at someone, but when I assured you every scene was important, I meant it. Here we have this kid jumping off a balcony to go play with his ball, but another camera trick tries to play off his Herculean strength as athleticism because we get a super skewed camera angle of his descent which makes it look like he jumped from two kids high when another scene a few minutes earlier actually showed the height of that second floor. This is followed up by him jumping to get his ball with another low camera shot so you can see how high he flies through the air to get it. But we know it's above the tree line from the earlier shot of him throwing it and we know how high the trees are from his conversation with the other kids before he jumped. In my estimation, humans aren't meant to go that high, but because of how much effort goes into the cinematography, unless you're sick in the head like me and watch this episode 40 times, you never figure this stuff out at all. All. I mean, even outside the camera work, you have to be convinced is brilliant by now, the subtleties of the storytelling are divine. In episode 1, a character literally tells you something that's going to happen, and a full episode shows the process of it happening, but you don't notice it happened until several episodes later because just like everything I've talked about today, all the clues are always there, but if you don't pick up on them for yourself, oh well. And this is not to say that the show is unentertaining if you aren't combing through frame by frame. I haven't even brought up the fact that there are man-eating monsters everywhere that probably ended the world in the first place. Even if you're self-aware and know that you'd miss every single hidden detail, Hellboy and Hellgirl's adventure in search of heaven is still plenty fun because of the people they meet along the way, good and bad, the monsters they have to defeat to stay alive, and the mysteries behind our two leading characters. Just look at this. <laughs> Hellgirl was not wrong, he is both 18 and 20 years old. Oh wait, did I say he? I'm not correcting myself. There are few things I've ever found as satisfying as seeing mysteries unravel before me, and if you're an intellectual like myself, trust me, this is a journey you won't want to miss out on because they just don't make them like this. 95 of 100, 607 fans awaiting a sequel. If you'd like to be part of a similarly amazing journey, subscribe and comment anything down below. When this number reaches 1000, I'm adapting my light novel into an original manga and I'll be picking some random subs who comment on this video and designing characters based on them to include in the story. Thanks to patrons Bolivar Sanchez, Lucas HF, and Grog for helping make this video possible. If you'd like to join them and help finance all the crazy ideas I have for videos, go on over to patreon.com forward slash samuix607. This video has been stupid long, so I appreciate you for sticking around. Until next time, this has been Kenchan, Fanboy.